Okay, so this is going now. So, Willa. Heather. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you. After all the emails. Yeah. So, basically, I just wanted to ask, um, in your own words, who you are, what you do, why you like Gestalt, why you're linked in some way with Gestalt, what it is for you. Uh, well, I began um, in a Gestalt therapy group mm -hmm. uh, many years ago, and um, in the group, my therapist knew I was a dancer and, mm -hmm. a, and a teacher of movement, and she asked me to ground one of the um, patients in the group because she couldn't feel her feet. So when I started working with a woman to help her feel her feet, then my therapist at the time, the leader of the group, started to send me all her clients. And oh. I became, I was a, a teacher of movement and a dancer and a choreographer, but then I started to get a practice, a private practice in working with movement, in movement therapy. Mm -hmm. So then I began to study all about it. Um, I studied breathing, I studied um, something called body-mind centering, uh, which is a developmental perspective, mm -hmm. uh, because my teacher Bonnie Cohen worked with uh, infants and uh, with developmental delays. Long history, long history. And as I became more involved in the Gestalt community, I started to teach for them at an institute. Mm -hmm. I was the body person. And then I watched them work and I thought, I, I would like to do this and bring my understanding of uh, movement into the Gestalt session. Right. So I went to a four-year training program and then I met Laura Pearls and started working with her in her weekly training group. Mm -hmm. uh, Laura talks about supports for contacting. So does Paul Goodman in uh, Pearl's Heferline Goodman. Right. Uh, the supports are the sensory motor supports mm -hmm. that allow contacting to emerge, that are, that are part of contacting. There is no contacting without sensory motor support. Okay. The only way we're connecting together, making this contact, is through our movements, mm -hmm. through our breathing. And since uh, we contact something all the time, we are alive and moving all the time. Even when we sleep, we're moving. Mm -hmm. um, so I started to train as a Gestalt therapist, and then bringing in my understanding of developmental, early developmental movements. When I came to study with Laura Pearls, and almost every week she talked about supports for contacting, um, I thought, here, and for Laura, uh, a support was anything that had been assimilated by the organism that they could use as support. And basic sensory motor supports were, um, were primary to her. So I thought, I can use my understanding of these develop, how supports development, how movement develops over time, especially in the first year, to support the develop of contacting. Right. Does that make sense Yeah, to it does. It absolutely does. So that is your own independent uh, sort of contribution. I, I, I'm, I didn't realize I was doing mm -hmm. this because I thought, oh, I was just following what made, ex made, made sense. Ex what made sense, but also what was exciting. Mm -hmm. And then someone said, oh, now we have a somatic developmental theory for Gestalt. And I thought, yeah, I suppose we do. And we didn't before because our founders didn't believe in stages, right. that this happens and then it's over, mm -hmm. that happens and then it's over. But when Daniel Stern wrote his uh, first book about um, all this infant research and talked about it in terms of these ongoing, interpenetrating uh, phases of experience so that the past now influence the future and now influence the future. And I thought, well, that's Gestalt. Mm -hmm. And then he talked about the primacy of experience, and that's Gestalt. It is. And when things are unfinished in whatever phase they've come up in, you see the replications in that in people's movement, don't you? Well, because there's always this historic past, mm -hmm. which are the legs for this present moment. Right. So 
all that early history is here as it emerges in this moment. Sometimes you'll call upon my history to be right here, and sometimes not so. So that's how I got involved. That's very involved. It's very, it's very involved. And I've been doing this for a while mm -hmm. because I started to, well, I started to study Gestalt, training Gestalt in the early 80s, but I started this work in understanding infant movements in the mid-70s. And I'm still fascinated. It is a very, it's a very deep subject. It's not something you can just go through quickly. Yeah, well, it also keeps growing. The work keeps growing. Mm -hmm. And the more I teach it, the more I understand it, the more it develops. Wonderful. And so what has Gestalt done for you? What? That's not an easy... It's given me a home. Mm -hmm. It's given me a home. It's given me a place because Gestalt... Merleau-Ponty says, he says eloquently, and I will not say this so eloquently, but the, the how we know that a, a theory is rich is because we're thinking of not what the theory has said, but what it has not yet said. And there's so much in Gestalt for us to further develop. And that's what we've been doing, especially in the last 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. really, is finding more and more ways of, of delving into the richness of Gestalt. Because what I'm saying in terms of development is even already there. I'm just bringing it to the foreground and furthering it. Mm -hmm. Then I loved watching in your workshop too that you, you transcend as you're going. You just keep going deeper into and further into a concept. I think that's yeah. that's part of the magic of what can be done with this stuff. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. So, so it gave you a home. It gave me a home. It gave me. Um, a group of people who were interested in what I had to say. Mm -hmm. I mean, what could be better than that? No, that's a lovely yeah. feeling, yeah. is to be heard. Yeah, and to be valued. So I, I hope that, I know I value the community, and I, I hope they value me as much as I value them. I think they do. Uh, without having met you before today, I know that I've heard enough wonderful things about you to know that you are a very deeply loved person. So you, you do have a home, quite sure. Thank you. What would you say? What else could you say? Um, I think I've said it. Okay. Yeah. But thank okay. you for that. That was very touching. That's, that's true. That's, that's what made me want to sit down and talk to you. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. Mi placer. Okay, thank you. Oh, yes. Did that make sense, sweetheart? That made wonderful sense. Okay.